We are live. What a weekend, boys. Powerful. What a weekend. What of a weekend. Got some um some shifts in the pound for pound rankings. Got a new champion, well a new interim champion in the featherweight division. Bantamweight division. What weight was that again? Dude, it's all, it's all starting to get cloudy to me because I saw a featherweight take a lightweight to this to distance, and then controversially, some may say he won. I don't know. So there's all these weight classes getting mixed up in my mind now, man. Featherweight, featherweight interim uh, title fight. Mm-hmm. Mm, mm, mm. So let's just jump. Let's jump into that because I mean. What do y'all think? Wait, wait, how'd wait. You, how'd you vote? Welcome back to the Ashy Knuckles podcast. I'm Mosey P. That's Brian W. Casual yeah, Chris. Marky G. And Johnny Dubs. You can't see him. He looks like John Jones, but he's not John Jones. <laughs> but yeah, let's jump straight into it. Let's go straight into this Islam versus... uh. Alexander matchup, one for the ages, probably the greatest uh, um, high level MMA fight I've seen in a long uh, time. Definitely a fight of the year. Uh, I don't, I mean, it's it's already two months in, but I think I don't think anything's going to come close to it. Um, it, it truly was astonishing to, to watch live, um, and I think. It clearly shows that uh, the title discussion or not, uh, the GOAT status of Alexander Volkanovsky, it, it's not too early. Like, he, he is going to go down as one of the greatest featherweight champs. Well, I got a question for you, John. Check this out. Do you think, uh, as like a casual level fan watching it, do you think they would agree that it was like one of the best fights ever? Because we all watch it. Chris can't be called casual Chris no more. He could be like fan Chris. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Uh, like he's got some years now. So he's, no, he's no longer casual Chris. He could be regular watching Chris. I don't know. As a casual fan. Taking off a training wheel. So if you if you were watch and you see Oliveira run through these guys, you know Khabib ran through all these guys. And you saw Islam run through uh, Oliveira. And... He had that aura of invincibility. Everyone was saying, oh, Hulk is going to be dominated. It's not even going to make it out of the first or second round. It's not even going to make it. But it went the distance. And um, round two could be argued. Round three and round five definitively for Volk. And according to the new criteria for judging a 10-8 round, you could say that round five was a 10-8 for Alexander Volkanovsky because according to the new rule when you're judging it if one fighter is clearly diminished um, due to the effective strikes or grappling of another opponent uh, the, the judges must consider that a 10-8 it doesn't matter if it was a, they weren't completely dominated for the full 5 minutes if they were diminished in their ability it must be a 10-8 round so according to that it should have been a 10-8. So you could argue about round two. If Even if you give the three to Islam, it should have been a draw. And that's not even getting into the foul play that's at work, allegedly. We'll get to that. We're talking yeah, we'll about the fight right regardless. now. We're talking about the fight right now. Regardless, I, I think if you just know the surface level stuff, you, you really thought that Islam was going to completely dominate and get him on the ground and it's over. But <laughs> Volkanovsky was smiling and laughing with him on his back. So everyone says, oh, it's, it's dangerous. It's, it's super dangerous. It's over if he's on your back. And he, he, he didn't care. And, you know, they said, oh, Australia doesn't have any good wrestlers. Doesn't have wrestling tradition. And there, there was very few... Like, in round four, there was almost no real submission attempts by Islam. 
I mean, he tried earlier and he couldn't get it. Um, so just thinking of it from a, a, a surface level, I, I, I think I think it does hold up to a, a great fight. And as someone that knows what they're looking at, oh my god, it, the explosiveness and the uh, speed and the aggression of uh, Volkanovski. So you think the Especially casual the, fan would enjoy this fight? Uh, for sure. And, like, you have the small guy pressuring the big guy. Well, I would say you had a, the small guy pressuring the, pressuring the slightly bigger guy. His, his arm is not exactly a monster. They're both, like, you know, relatively small guys. I, to answer the question, I, I don't think um, the ca- a casual fan would look at this as like, oh my god, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. As a casual fan, they would they would understand some of the nuance things that were going on on the ground, especially when um, a big part of some of those rounds had uh, Bokanowski. Bokanowski had his back taken and was sitting inside of a body triangle having a casual conversation with Islam. And laughing and throwing some, you know, weak backward punches for way too long for that to be entertaining for a casual fan. Agreed. I think that the casual fan wouldn't appreciate the ground game and the hand fighting that was happening. Uh, position fighting and the hand fighting that was happening on the ground. So they'd probably just find this as mediocre. Um, they'd get really excited with the knockdowns. There was a lot of technical striking that was going on, a lot of hard hits. I, I think there was a total of four knockdowns on each side. I think Islam got two, at least. I think officially there was only one. Well, I mean, yeah. maybe officially, but there was a couple that uh, Volkanovski was really hurt by. Right. There was um, a few times when... um. Like, if you count that first power jab that Volkanovski landed on Islam, where Islam kind of stumbled backwards. I don't know if you remember that sequence mm-hmm. in the first round. Um, yeah, I do. They, they, that, that didn't count as a knockdown. And also, okay. also um, Volk got dropped to, like, one knee, but he kind of quickly popped back up. After Islam hit him with an elbow. But they don't, I don't think they counted that one as a knockdown either. The only real knockdown... I think was credited to uh, to uh, Islam. Yeah, I was counting all those, yeah. but they would get excited with all those. Even a, a stumble back, it, it creates an excitement to it. So, oh yeah, I, I would. I, I think they would have been in and out on this one. I don't think they would call it a fight of the year, but it definitely should be a candidate for it. It's a fight of the year for the hardcores, though. Yes. Definitely. It could be hardcore Chris now. <laughs> hardcore Chris? Yeah, he's not casual Chris. He graduated. Yeah. He's hardcore Chris now. Oh my god. I, I think this this fight proved to me that Islam isn't invincible. Not as bulletproof as like Habib was at like as a lightweight champion. And this fight also proved to me that Volkanovski is uh, one of the best mixed martial artists of our time. He looked really, he looked um, really good. He has no apparent holes anywhere in his game, other than some physical limitations. Like everything he has, everything in his game is um, pretty bulletproof. Like he's strong in the stand up. He's explosive. He's smart. His, foot, his fight IQ is high. He has um, really good grappling, both offensively and defensively. And at times in this fight. He took the uh, grappling to um, Islam, whereas it looked like in the beginning of the fight, Islam clearly had the grappling advantage. And then toward the championship rounds, he seemed to fade a little bit, and Volk took over that the grappling exchanges, um, even against the fence. So uh, Volk proved to me that he is more than just the pound-for-pound pound best right now. I think he's one of the best mixed martial artists of our time. Yeah, uh, I 100% agree with all those statements. I 
I, I think it, it's probably going to show a lot of guys in the division uh, the aura of invincibility uh, that can be been Islam inherited from him, especially after the Oliveira fight. I think that's shattered. And, you know, he really didn't seem to enjoy being put uh, on the back foot with the pace, especially towards the later rounds. Um, so I, I think some of the guys that are more cautious and kind of scared to, like, initiate and get taken down aren't going to be as afraid. They, they, the, the holes in his game have been exposed. Is that, you know what I mean? Here's a question I ask myself, though. Were those holes being exposed? Or did he just take Volk lightly? I don't, I'm, I, I don't really remember all the lead-ups and all the, like, um, all the press conferences, all the embeddings when they, you know, spoke to Islam about this matchup. But just watching the fight, it didn't seem like he was too worried about Volkanovski at all. Like, he was just super cautious in the beginning. Like, there wasn't a whole lot of activity in the first round. But I don't know if um, the version of Islam that we got yesterday without Habib in his corner is the version we're going to get from here on out. Well, it, it, Khabib's not coming back, so... Yeah, that's you know, true. He's not going to have that in the corner. And I, I, I do think that people, like, their his um, approach to fighting, as, like, other guys have, can see what Bulk did successfully against him, and that, they can build their game plan around that now. I mean, that also, so, that, that sounds good. However, like, in order to execute that game plan, you have to have similar skill set as Volkanovski. And Volk was able to execute that, that game plan, and arguably he didn't because he lost. Like, he didn't, let's, let's just be real here. Like, he, he didn't win the fight. Um, he had some really good moments. Like, that fifth round was extremely impressive. I would say is like one of the best rounds that I've seen anybody have against um, Islam so far in the UFC. Um, there's, it was a clear went clearly um, a round that Volkanovski dominated. There were times in the you know the first round, the second round, third round, fourth round where it, it left a little bit to be desired. It wasn't like this; no one ran away with it. It was just like a it was decent, but. Obviously, the edge went. All the judges gave the edge to um, Islam. And that's why it took the unanimous decision. But I don't think it, I don't think mo- many people expected it to be that competitive. Especially the casuals. I didn't, I know I know I didn't even think it would be that competitive. I thought he, Islam would just run over Okanowski. Yeah, let's well, go here. Let, let's go here. Like. Uh, who- Let's talk about who thinks who won and why they think they won on this real quick. Because I know there's different opinions in this in this group. And what do you feel about it, Chris? Did you get to watch that fight this weekend? Uh, I only caught the last round, the fifth round. Oh, um, shit. And I know, I only caught the fifth round, man. When I saw that, I was like, man, Volk got this, bro. Volk got this. Especially seeing the damages, you know? Like, Volk barely, barely wore it on his face compared to Islam. And that's when I, I was texting Mosey about it. And it's like, yeah, he, uh, that fifth round, I, I just, I, I thought it was like that the whole entire fight, but. Oh, it was a different yeah, was story like, for the rest of the fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't, I don't really have too much to say about it just cause, um, I didn't, I didn't get to catch the full fight, just the fifth round. And that's all I can really talk about. And Volk definitely dominated that fifth round. That should have been like a 10 8 round for him. That what definitely if, could have been a 10 8. If, um, if, I give a, if I give a grade either way, I would say um, I would be leaning Islam. Depending on what. Okay, so I'm, if my memory's a little cloudy and I haven't rewatched the fight. Which round, which round was it where Islam had. 
Volkan is back in the body triangle for most of the round. Which round was that? The, the fourth round. The fourth round? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that was the fourth. So if it, it, this, it, to me, I, I ask myself these questions when I'm going to grade a round. If neither, I go, I go by damage first because this is a fight to me. Like it's, it's supposed to be, a, it's a combat sport. So first, the first thing I go for is how effective is your strike and how effective are you at inflicting damage on your opponent? Neither guy mm-hmm. inflicted any damage in the fourth. They spent the most of the the entirety of that fight. Um, on on the ground, and Islam had the dominant position. He had the body triangle. I'm a hundred percent sure that Volkanovski didn't didn't want to be on his back, leaning back, throwing little hammer fists. Who preferred to not be there? So you, I, the fact that no damage was done, I have to give credit to Islam for winning that round because he forced that position and he, he was able to hold. Um, Volkanovski there, which we saw like most of the fight, he wasn't able to hold Volkanovski down in any of the grappling exchanges. But was doing a really good job of defending with um, initial takedowns and even getting up after being taken down. So I got to give credit to Islam for holding him down there, even though not much was done except for um, a lot of hand fighting and some submission attempts. There's a ton of hand fighting, a ton of shit talking, and some some lightly battered. Hammer fist. There wasn't a whole lot of action in that round, but I got to give the edge in that round to Islam for forcing the position and holding the position. And with that being said, I gave Islam the first two rounds as well. So if he won two out of three, if he won three rounds out of five, I would say Islam won the fight. And I don't think he ran away with it. I don't think it was some like knockout slaughter where he just destroyed Volkanovski. No, I think he slightly edged him. By winning three rounds out of five, I definitely gave Volk the fifth. I mean, there's some argument that you can say Volk maybe won the um, third, but with, with it, just with all things being even and given the benefit of the doubt, I had I gave the the win. I thought the win was justified, and it wasn't a robbery. I thought that uh, you know, not Islam did enough. He did enough to keep his title. He did enough. Even though I really felt that night that even though Alex was uh, being straddled in the fourth round, he was the one getting points, doing something. But that was that night. We had been uh, intaking a couple <laughs> alcoholic beverages and whatnot. And I was being a little biased. You know, I, mean, I didn't want to have to shave my stash yet. You know what I'm saying? Now I got to shave my stash. So, uh, yeah. Hey, John, don't forget, when I see you, you better have no stash. I need this. Don't worry. No stash, but you're keeping everything else, right? <laughs> no stash. You need the whole thing. <laughs> you yep. got Abraham. You need the whole thing. So Mark, yep. Mark, what was your, uh, your opinion? So, night of, my opinion was completely on Volkanovski. I thought Volkanovski, you know, he, I thought he was dominating the... Uh, striking exchanges and Islam wasn't doing much with the takedowns. He was just kind of holding him down and there was a lot of hand fighting going on so nothing was really advancing. But in clearer heads and re-watching the fight I actually think that the striking exchanges especially in the first three rounds were back and forth. They were pretty even both ways and then you got to edge towards Islam because he gets the takedown and he had the ground control. So I've actually changed my mind on this fight from that night to say that Islam actually did win this fight. I think he got most of the rounds off of just takedowns and ground control. The striking besides the fifth round was pretty, like, dead even. And I think they were exchanging both good shots. Uh, most of the damage that I, I want to harp on and say that You know, in a street fight, Volk won 100% because of damage. But that was all pretty much in the fifth round for the most part. Uh, So, yeah. I think Islam won this fight. I don't even think it's as close as I originally thought it anymore. Scoring-wise, though, it could be uh, Mm -hmm. if they they actually went with the right 
type of scoring, that fifth round could have been a 10-8, honestly. I have been. Oh, give me that. Give me that fifth round of ten eight. This is a draw to me. Yeah, yeah. That that would have been a lot better. I, so for me, I thought it was for sure a, a Volk win the night of. But looking back now, uh, I think it should have been a draw because I think for sure that was a ten eight round. Um, Islam was completely gassed. Uh, you could say that the, you know he kept him in that. Uh, body triangle in the fourth round and yes there was hand fighting but there were no real uh submission attempts by islam and you could make the argument that he should have been stood up um and i think uh you know i can see why they would let him keep that position but i do think at there was certain points that there was not enough going on to allow that position to stay stay there but regardless I think it's a draw, and I think they should draw it back. Um, and that's not factoring in the controversy that is uh, Islam using an IV. Hold on, John. Hold on, John. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. We're getting to that. Hold on, buddy. Hold on. But I will say this. Pound for pound, Volkanovski is number one in my book still. Pound for 100%. pound. 100%. Yeah. Also... If we were going by one FC judging criteria, Volkanovski wins that hands down. Period. Right. If they judge it by a whole fight instead of round by round, 100% Volkanovski wins. Now that is what something we should talk about because I was I was gonna say um, if you're just going by like how we how it's run here and how the UFC runs it, they go like round by round, scoring each round on a ten point must system. If you're going by that criteria, then it's, to me it's clear that Islam won the fight. He won more rounds. He won the majority of the rounds. He did f- a five-round fight. He won three of the five uh, in a 10-point must system. If you if you gave a very generous 8-point, I mean a 10-8 to Volkanovski for the fifth round, then you can argue a draw potentially. But um, it'd be tough for me to give him a 10-8 there. Even though I thought it was a dominant round, I don't think he like overwhelmed them. There was no chance. There was no at no point that I think Islam was in in uh, in a sequence to be finished. Well, here is what a ten eight round a score of a ten eight does not require a fighter to dominate their opponent for five minutes of a round. I think it would be an advantage of the domination. Also impacted their opponent with either effective strikes or effective grappling maneuvers that have diminished the abilities of their opponents. Judges must consider giving the score of 10 8 when a fighter impacts their opponent significantly in a round, even though they do not dominate the action. Islam was very clearly diminished and looking awful and cooked that fifth round. So, I, I, according to the new rules, for judging a 10-8, I, I think it's very clearly a 10-8 for Volk. Let me ask you a question. Were you cheering for Volk doing this fight? What? So, so were you cheering for Volkanowski during this fight? Yeah. So you don't think you might be a little bit biased in the reason why you feel this way? Well, I, I've uh, I've been I've talked to a bunch of people about this, and I wasn't the one that brought up the. I, I didn't even look this up. Uh, my buddy sent it to me, so I think. Oh, I was, I'm just. I was, what about the question I just asked you? Like, how do you feel? Do you think you might be a little bit biased in uh, feeling that this should be a ten eight because you were cheering for Volk? No, I I, I really right. think that was a big round, um, especially when you look back on the Jan Magominov fight where they gave a 10-8 to Magomed for just well, what the Volk did. Smashing the shit out of that guy. Okay. Just checking. Just checking. I mean, you still, you still don't answer my question, but it's cool. Hey, I think it's unanimously to say that uh, that was a 10-8 round on Volk's part in the fifth round. You gotta be a blind man not to be able to tell you that one. 
Yeah, I mean, there, there's a there's a heavy heavy argument that 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 could be a ten eight. But I don't. I think the the thing we need to take out of this whole conversation is none of us are arguing that Volk completely won this fight. Most of us are saying that Islam probably won this fight, or at best, it was a draw. He had champion's edge. Yeah, I, champion's edge for sure. I, yeah. 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 I thought the Australian and, edge was going to get the decision, but nah, they brought in uh, <laughs> me too. They brought in a different commission, right? Was it was it Australian guys <laughs> or what? Who who were they? They must have brought in the <laughs> European guys. I, I got my uh, I got my residency in uh, Australia, uh, Sal Di Amato. I don't even know who the judges are. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh man. I'm making up stuff, false narratives. I think Sal Amato is the only judge that I know, like off the top, just because he covers a lot of fights. What do you? Let me oh, ask I, a question I, to the panel. I have a question. I have a question. What do you? What do you guys think about changing the format of championship fights completely? Uh, I am the hundred percent on board. It depends on what you want to change it to. What are you talking about? Like open scoring? No, no, no. That would open scoring would be awesome for every fight. Um, I'm saying like for championship fights, because here's the thing: once the belt <coughs> changes hands, that's a significant difference in pay, in status, and legacy. Everything changes once you reach the top of the mountain. So I, I want to see more. Def- I want to see an absolute victory when it comes to um, a title bout. I don't want to like this. What happens if uh, Volk gets another minute or so in that fifth round? Do you, yeah, do, I, I think the fight might be. I mean, it might he might be able to TKO. Um, maybe to yeah, TKO and finish Islam. Um, or what if there's a, another round? Does uh, it BKFC do that? They give him another round if it comes if it goes to a draw. Then they have to like do one more um, like sudden death round. Yeah, they do a sudden death round. I don't know if additional rounds would solve the problem because it, you can still kind of game the clock a little bit. I think so, it would be awesome if they if they just get, made it the last round like untimed. I don't think the fight would go significantly longer because when you get into the finishing sequences, like you get, once you get past the five minute mark, those guys are exhausted. So they gonna, someone's going to make a mistake and get finished. And I know it's not right. fair. Not fair, but it's not a fair thing. I thought about it. It's not fair because they're not fighting this way the entire time. But this is a significant difference between being a champion and being a contender. So, either so when I say additional rounds, I would say they keep on going until someone finishes or submits. Um, so or, I or t- 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 kill was cool too. Hell yeah. Right. A referee, so, uh, referee stop is just referee stop is just fine as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, well, I consider that as uh, a, a knockout as well. You know what I mean? Like a a finish. Yeah. Um, to the death. So, Fight to the death. I, I think we're on the same page. Uh, I I think it would just you keep on you give them the time to rest and recover and and like reset from the you know because every every round starts on the feet. So. Either way, though, I, I think that it, it the championship is is a big deal, and we need to stop the the decisions for championships have been so controversial lately. Well, oh, there's been a lot of controversial decisions, but if yeah. it for a title, I, I think it should be it should go to a judge. It should be a someone has to someone someone's going to break. Yes, and it. If, if, if uh, uh, we did that for that fight, both can you hear me? Or well, this is better now. I think yeah, it's better now. Yeah. You were breaking up pretty badly there. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, mm-hmm. I was saying that Volk very clearly had more in the tank, and he could have gone further. Like if they had another round, or they kept going until, and I, I don't think Islam was going to, you know, he was tapped, um, energy wise. So what you're saying? I'm going to show my bias. Ten minute rounds, last round. Yeah, 
Oh, I, 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 no, just, I would say, and it's gonna be, I don't want to say 10 minute round, but just untime it. It's like, I, I feel, I think that once you get past that, that point where you've been fighting for 20 minutes already, get to the 25 minute mark, I don't think it's gonna take an extra five minutes. It might be only need another minute or so, maybe even another 30 seconds. Because, like, if, so most of the time at the end of rounds, in the end of championship rounds, there's something definitive happening there where somebody either survives. If you look back at Israel versus Pereira into that at, toward the end of the fight, you can tell like he started getting caught a lot more by Pereira. Like, in, you know, if you, if you extend that out and referee doesn't wave it off, I think he's going to get caught more. But he, he might, he might not. He might be able to evade and recover and whatever. But chances are he's going to get hit more and getting hit later in the fight. When you got all this accumulated damage, all this accumulated fatigue, chances of them going down and being stopped is higher to me. I don't think it's going to be um, a, a longer fight. And realistically, you might not even have to make it a five-round fight. Instead of making it a five-round fight, you keep all the fights three rounds, and in championship fights, you make the third round just untimed. Oh, no, no, no. Give them the fourth round where it's untimed. <coughs> Crazy. Okay, so you're saying if it, if it goes to like a, a judge's decision? Like, give him a little break or something. <laughs> Make it two minutes instead of one. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. So you're, saying like, you're saying like instead of uh, it going, like if, if at the end of the third, if there's not a clear, like, I mean, obviously it's the end of the third, so they made it to the stool. You're not going to a decision if it's a championship fight. You go to an untimed fourth round? No, no time limit. There is a winner. I like that. I like that. Um, I'm against so all of it. <laughs> they would never commission <laughs> that. <laughs> well, what is it? Wasn't it Waste Gracie and uh, who's the guy? It's like 30 minutes. It went correct. But uh, this is, that was Ken Shamrock. Again, this is the this is not every bout. This is only a championship bout, and usually championship bouts are the last one or two fights anyway. Right, right. I'm not. I'm not opposed to it. So the time constraints won't be there. Like you're not going like, oh, well, we got another match, another few matches to go. You guys, can you wrap this up? I've been fighting for an hour. This is the last. Uh, fight. That's not how pay per view have time slots. Also, they got to be within a certain time time frame. Also for pay per views. Also, but my biased end on it is I'm usually watching these on work nights where I just worked 14 hours and I got to go to work the next morning and I'm only gonna take like a two hour nap before work. I can't afford for them to go on for another 10, 15 minutes because I'm already fighting myself to stay awake. It's not going to happen. Hoping, that's what we're hoping that this um, alleviates because instead of having a. Yeah, I know it's not going to happen. Or instead of having Legally, 20, they won't allow it. Well, instead of having a, 25, <laughs> a guaranteed 25 minute fight, having a guaranteed 15 minute fight with maybe some extra. You know, maybe. It could, it could, I mean, it could end early. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's this is it's like a completely off the wall suggestion. But I'm just trying to figure out a way that we can get out of these decisions and take the judges as far away from this sport as possible. Because I'm, I'm I don't want this to turn into NFL. They gotta come with better scoring. That's what they gotta do. Yeah. They gotta come well, with better scripts. So when you have become a, a referee for MMA, you have to take a bunch of tests and courses and classes. Why aren't the judges doing that? Like, why isn't there a judges. Very, like exactly? So I just, why is, isn't there a judging like school that you have to take and the nuance of MMA? It should be all former and fighters. Why and judges? It, like how to score it? So the issue with that is you have. These guys train together, and they, you know, there are those that bias, right? Yeah, so that's it true. shouldn't be former fighters. It should be people taught by former fighters, though. Like, have them understand, have them watch sparring, and kind of, you know, what I mean, like they should very clearly uh, have to be able to like sh judge a bunch of fights and be graded on how well they do and that's how they become a official right they should not be appointed by the commission yes yeah, and it be. shouldn't be the ufc judges either because that's 
very unethical. I don't think UFC has uh, judges. I think it's all commission based. Whatever uh, yeah, athletic. Rid of the UFC right. judges a long time ago. I just want so, championship. I, want, uh, I just want championship fights to be out of the hands of a decision. I, I don't. I want it to be decided by the fighters. Same. I think the decisions just need to be better. Like the the ten point must must go. That's it. Like they. Agreed. They have different criteria, and like I said, like we've talked about multiple times on this podcast, that the one FC way is just better, and in my opinion. And I think a lot of these terrible decisions just go away when you judge the fight as a whole. Yeah, true. I mean, well, well, hopefully, hopefully, because it's still three guys that are just giving their opinion on what they saw. Yes. As opposed to like having the people that are in, involved decide the match. I don't mind referees stepping in and stopping the fight and deciding the match. I don't mind even sometimes doctor stoppages. This is necessary, and you got to protect the fighters from themselves sometimes. But just once once it goes to decision, we just get some of like even like with the stats given, like we'll see this guy had this much control time or this guy landed these many significant strikes. And still, like, you know, the decision goes to a fighter that didn't have the edge in those categories. So it's, it's I just think it's the closer we can get to the championship fights not being in the judges' hands, the better. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, so I think. We, we either need to change the way championship fights go or we need to change the, the officiating and how the judging works. Like, the whole fight should be judged in the whole. But, I, I mean, mean, this is a, a dead horse at this point. We, we can't change shit because we're not, we're not involved. With <laughs> <laughs> as, as fans... I guess the the only thing we can hope for is to get more transparency, like get open scoring. That might be the best well, thing we can hope for right now. Well, I like the idea of open scoring, scoring, man. Yeah, I don't hate that. So let's uh, are we are we all wrapping this up with uh, the whole Volk and Islam? I think we kind of beat this into the ground. Absolutely not. No. No. We got one more he, thing that uh, John to, really we, wants. We to got talk some about. breaking news. Breaking news oh, yeah. broke yeah. yesterday. Was it yesterday? Or today? <laughs> Earlier today? It was today <laughs> at some point. <laughs> yeah. So, what, what, what do we know now that we didn't know Sunday Saturday? Go ahead, John. So, apparently, allegedly, uh, Islam was hired a nurse to give him an IV to rehydrate, which is a two-year USADA suspension. Jose Aldo? So, if this is true, I think that uh, Islam has to, you know, should be stripped. uh, Like, John Jones in D.C., no contest. No. No contest. And I think Islam should, or not Islam, Volk should be out there banging the drum, saying, hey, I'm, this this guy cheated. This is an asterisk. Uh, let's rematch. Let's run it back. And Islam has been popped before. Let's not forget that. So, uh, I, you know, there's a picture uh, of um, Islam with a bruise in his um, vein. So, it's uh, very suspect, and I, I wouldn't put it past him because, you know, they did say it was a very hard weight cut. We do know he cuts a lot of weight. He did look very diminished at the press conference. In the weigh-in, he looked really bad. And, you know, he very clearly was fading that fourth and fifth round. So. 
Well, either way, if Definitely he's stripped, yeah, he's, he's not fighting a rematch. Of, uh, yeah, they, they need a rematch. Did you see that picture of Josh Emmett after the weigh-in? Where he just looked drained. I don't know if anyone saw it. I'll try to put it inside the chat later. No, uh, I mean, that Josh Emmett's a big boy. Yeah. <laughs> he has to cut a lot. <laughs> Listen, if they're going to strip Makachev for the title... Because of this. Yeah, when he gets uh, off his suspension and fights again, he might not be fighting Volk again. We don't know who he's going to fight again, especially if it's two years. Two years is a long time in the sport. By then, whoever Volk ends up fighting to further, because I'm pretty sure he'll be one of the candidates to fill that vacant spot. So it'll probably be the winner of uh, Benny and... No, no, that's later. It'll be the winner of Benny and Charles versus Volk for the uh, vacant lightweight title. If all this is true and it happens. Because, uh, well, I don't know. Because, you know, he might have to fight. Uh, well, he will have to unify the titles with um the Pantera. Yeah, yeah. But, honestly, I think that fight could kind of wait. You get what I'm saying? That <laughs> fight could kind of wait. They, if Arnold Allen beats Holloway, God forbid, he could fight uh, Pantera for the interim belt. You know, they've done it before, at least once. You know what I'm saying? With Burrell. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he defended the interim belt once. But either way, I feel Volkanovski should be fighting for that lightweight vacant belt if all this is true and Makachev gets stripped. Well, yeah. What happened? Wait, didn't it, didn't it DC get the belt after John was stripped though? No. Yeah, but that was a uh, no, 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 no. Former champion. Didn't they fight uh, Rumble and him fought for the vacant title the first time around? Am I right? No, the 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 first time around, yes. Yep. The second time, he was granted the belt. Oh, like how Aldo got the belt from uh, uh, McGregor. When he got stripped? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so th- that is it, true. He got promoted. So, I mean, it could but be... But those were also way. previous champs in that division. So I, I think right. Volk would have to fight for the, the vacant title. And to be honest, if he does fight Benny or Oliveira, I like Volk in both those fights. Well, I think this fight proved that Oliveira, or not Oliveira, Islam and Volkanovski are the two best uh, lightweights on the planet right now. Like, period. I, I don't see either one of them losing too many people. Now, don't get me wrong, I do want to see Poirier versus uh, Volkanovski. I think it's a good match. Yeah. I think, it's a great I think that's a great yeah. matchup. I think Volk would demolish Poirier, to be honest. Nah, his wrestling isn't as great as uh, Habib, so I don't know, man. That's why I want to see that matchup. It's one of those great matchups, I feel. Yeah, it's going to be a good striking matchup, definitely. Mm-hmm. Well, hear me, out. Think, what... hear me out. So, Volk becomes champ. Uh, against Oliveira or Benny, and then he defends against McGregor. Oh, that's that's probably gonna happen nine times out of ten. If the, the script, UFC bro. want, yeah, the script. If the script goes to plan, Chandler <laughs> and McGregor, <laughs> you'll see. Chandler and McGregor have <laughs> a great, a great Ultimate Fighter show, and it brings it back to the masses. And it blows up because it's going to be on, I think, ESPN2 and also Plus. Something yeah. like that. It's going to be easier for the uh, people to watch without a subscription or something. You'll be able to watch it on cable. And then from there, they have their fight. McGregor almost loses the first round, almost gets finished, and catches Chandler with that left hand, puts him away, and then he's back. Money Mac is back. You know what I'm saying? And then by that time, we got uh, Volk already fought either Benny or Oliveira for the title. And Volk's the champ now. 
And now he's double champ fighting the first double champ in December on the last card of the year. Bam. That's the script Ooh. for 2023. Hundred million dollar uh, paper pay per view. I know, I know. I, I'm uh, Mystic Mosey. I see this. <laughs> Mystic Mosey. I see this. There's only one problem, Mystic Mosey. <laughs> nice. There's only one problem. Have you seen Tom McGregor right now? He looks like a Big Mac. <laughs> he's extra. I mean, I don't know. No, he might have to cut to get the 170, bro. He's cutting. He's cutting. Right now? He's back on the uh, USADA yeah. diet. Okay. Yeah, he's back on the USADA diet. Is he back Cut out the acai. No more, no more acai for uh, Mr. McGregor? Mm-mm. All those Mexicans, um... Well, he you know. just got hit by a car. <laughs> Literally. And it didn't do shit. <laughs> Wait, what? Did that miss something? He just got hit by a car? Yeah, he was on his bicycle. Yeah, he got hit by a car when he was on his bicycle. What? Uh, the, car was, the car got totaled, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Get that in. I don't know. Nah, the bike got totaled. But don't worry, the guy that hit him with the car gave him a ride home. It's all good. Okay. Um, so I heard about the uh, Islam IV thing. Here's my thing about that. That's kind of convenient that the person that's announcing this is Dan Hooker, somebody who got barbecued by Islam. <laughs> it, might be, it might be oh, just like, it, to me it sounds like these guys are just salty. And they're coming up with an with a excuse for why they lost. I mean, they could be right. Where does smoke this fire? I, like, I wouldn't even say these guys. But so, but I would say Dan Hooker is salty. Right. When it's, sometimes <laughs> when there's smoke, there isn't fire. It's just a vape. Like, it could, it could, <laughs> be, just, it could be just Dan Hooker blowing smoke. So, who knows? Right, right. It, who, yeah, I, I don't think anything's going to come out of it. But, but he has been popped before. In 2016, I believe. So, who knows? It, it's fun to theory, and it'd be interesting if it if the allegations are true. If you decide it does nothing, or if they slap a wrist, you know. I just noticed a trend of people making allegations about the winners. You never see. No one cares. Like I'm pretty sure that all these IVs are available to the losers as well. No one cares. When you're getting your ass whooped, they only care if you're holding that strap. And we didn't know when it T, TJ did EPO until he got popped for it. Um, but at that time, he was the man. He lost though. And up, oh, he was the loser though. Well, no, I'm saying we didn't we didn't know he's we didn't know he was on it when he was d- during his reign. Like you know, we don't know if he was on it or not. Allegedly, right, right. I'm saying we don't know if he was on it or not when he was you know dominating, but he was the man. You know that bantamweight, but we don't know if he was um, doing it. But it, sh- it now that him getting caught after he lost, of course, it sheds some like uh, it taints his accomplishments a little bit. And people always suspected. I mean, there's always been speculation, especially from the Kobe um, camps, that Islam is the CEO. Not Islam, but um, I'm sorry, Usman is the CEO of PO, even though he's never been caught or never been you know popped for anything. They just assume by looking at his um, accomplishments that he's, you know, doing something wrong. But how much of that is just these guys being salty? Because, you know, we we see, we've seen guys get away with being either um, have these awesome, these easy to pass steroid tests in the, you know, in the Brock Lesnar era or, you know, the Uberim era. era. And even if you go into the TRT era with everybody, you know, with 3,000, level 3,000 testosterone, you know what I mean? These guys. Yeah, and your Cormier. TRT Vitor, Daniel Cormier, um, TRT, um, what's this, Dan Henderson? Like, we had some mm-hmm. superheroes back when they were, like, just not, when they were letting that thing run wild. We had some superheroes. Yeah. But we don't talk about the guys who I, lost. Like, there's a lot of guys who were doing that that still weren't good. So it's not as if like just getting a needle in your ass is going to make you a champion. But I, I think we should go to the Pride UFC, uh, the Pride FC 
where they have, especially in the contract, we do not test for steroids and just let everyone do whatever. Make it a, uh, well, make it a, a, a written test? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you know, everyone loved baseball back when uh, everyone was juicing and hitting homework. I think uh, people would really enjoy watching guys get wrecked like TRT Vitor with those head kicks. So you're saying peak performance. Yeah, he blinded some people. Peak performance. Yeah, but the count is an asshole, so he kind of deserved it. Hey, leave your bro- older brother in his eye. Screw the brother, man. Leave him alone, man. Leave him alone, man. All right, I think we're, we're so pretty much I, I done with this, that. man. Yeah, yeah, we're going to now. yeah, let's go to the featherweight uh, interim bout. <clears throat> Gladly. Gladly. Yo, Yair is good, bro. That's all I got to say. Yair is good. He aight. Yeah, he aight. <laughs> he aight. All this salt, man. I'm just tasting all this. It tastes like <laughs> movie theater popcorn over here, man. It's just like... Bro, I didn't even think Josh Emmett was... Good enough to be in a title fight, but I'm, I, there ain't no salt over here. Wait, wait, why, why, why did you feel that way? He he did he wrecked on his way to the title shot. He didn't he didn't like just. I'm, I'm not even gonna that. argue that. He's just he's just my bias says that I didn't really care about him that much as a fighter. <laughs> okay, that's all me. it is. <laughs> no, it's, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> fair. I, I don't understand. What well, you don't understand, John? What's up, what's up John? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I just don't understand why there is an interim uh, championship fight when, you know, they, we, they have a champion and he very clearly is going to uh, destroy whoever comes. Hey, they were making sure just in case they had somebody promote. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. Just in case uh, Volk they won the belt, they had a backup plan. Plan B. Well, he said he wanted to defend both. And he's one of the few people I could see doing it. Here's the thing, though. There's never been a male champion to defend two belts, and it's never been allowed. Here's one thing I want to ask. After watching Volkanovski versus Islam, and this is not going back to that fight, but just the perception going into that fight. After we, I, I would say most people, Vegas included, Expected Islam to walk away with this. You know, the numbers were heavily in favor of Islam, and right now, everyone thinks that, like coming out of this fight, there's a huge public perception that Volk is going to walk over the rest of the uh, featherweight division, and I don't see that. I think that uh, this version of El Pantera. Might be the new the new featherweight champion. We could have an end new. I, I think that um, he matches up re- really well against Volkanovski, and this might be a, a sh- surprise. He might get the fir- he might be the first person to finish Volk. So what you're saying here is that he'll probably get his ass whooped for five rounds and then throw up a ducking forward elbow. Potentially, <laughs> you never know. I mean, he has he's shown he showed, the he, stand and bang. We, he showed us a triangle choke this weekend. It's back. Yeah, I know he had those. Yeah, neither did I. We, I've always known. Yeah, right. I didn't know he had that in his toolbox. I thought he was all kicks, man. Yeah, I've, I've always known Yaya Rodriguez for his high flying, unorthodox kicking style, and. Wrecking BJ Penn and wrecking all these aging vets with just this craziness. And what he did, the I mean, he pretty much put on a clinic against Josh Emmett. Let's be real, he did Looked good everywhere. His, his punches were crisp. Every time he decided to kick him in the ribs, he would leave a mark. His leg kicks were was pretty good. And then when the fight got to the mat, we saw how it finished. So, um. 
that version of Yair looked really good. I mean, we've seen other versions of Yair, so I understand why you have your doubts. I'm just saying that there is one thing about being on top is like it's hard to stay there, it's hard to stay champion, it's hard to stay on top. Mm-hmm. And the guys gunning for you, you know, like they still have something to be hungry for. They haven't tasted that championship or that championship level pay. I don't know, man. I, I, I'm excited to see the matchup between um, Yair Rodriguez and Alexander Volkanovski for the featherweight champ, championship. And I, I don't, I don't know. I feel it before. If you'd asked me this question before Saturday, I, I'd say, yeah, yeah, Volk wins. Sure. You're asking me this question on Monday, man, I I think um Yair has a legitimate shot to win this belt. Like more than legitimate shot. I still lean towards Volk walking away with it. Uh, I I do I do agree that Yair did look a lot better, especially with his stand up. His stand up he was keeping great distance with his kicks. He was keeping his space. He was striking phenomenally. He wouldn't let Josh Emmett get in at all to lay anything down on him. And obviously he improved his ground game. So there's that option. But Volk's Volk's looking pretty indestructible when it comes to submission defense at this point. Especially after that fight. Uh, and he's a tough motherfucker, so we'll see how that goes. And, it you know, you have to also um, take into account, you know, MMA math. How did Max right. Holloway and Yair go, you know? And then how did Volk and Max go? So, MMA math, Volk wins. Oh, my God, the variables. <laughs> The variables. <laughs> and if, if we're doing MMA math, which I think is yeah. uh, it doesn't work, MMA science a little bit better. Let's get into I love MMA, MMA math, man. Let's get into the MMA science. MMA science, though, the matchup between Yair Rodriguez and Max Holloway is an entirely different matchup of Volkanovski and Yair Rodriguez. It's, a, it's just a different matchup. We're talking about, like, we know Max is a volume boxer. That's what you're going to get from Max. You're going to get high cardio, high pace, boxing. Good takedown defense, good distancing. And he's going to pepper you with shots um, for you know, for as long as the fight goes on. He might even punch you 100 times. You, you never know because that's, that's his game. That's Max's game. A year is going to throw the kitchen sink at you. You're going to get kicked. You're going to be having to defend. Have to defend Every area, every piece of your body has to be on alert. He might kick you in the ankles. He might kick you in the calf, kick you in the ribs, kick you in the top of your head. You know, teeps to the body, jabs, uppercuts, elbows from underneath. Like you don't know, what you, you know, you don't know what you're gonna get. It's it's, it's very very diverse level of striking. Obviously, that adds in a lot of more variables, and a lot more things can happen. You know you got to prepare for a one-two all day long. You can, there's a certain kind of defense you can implore. It's a shorter guy, like a because Volkanovski is always going to be the shorter guy in every fight he gets into in this division. There's not that many guys that are his height. Most of the guys in his division are taller. But he's going to have to get close to get you know to be effective. He can get close and get knee in the face, man. He can get catch a flying knee. It, it's it's not it's not that straightforward of a matchup for him. That's why I feel that it's um, it's a little bit – it's not as clear that I – mean, I can see how he can beat a guy like Max. I mean, he can just, you know, keep that high guard and keep the pressure forward and not – he's not going to get knocked out. I mean, Max is not going to knock him out. So he's going to – he has a path to victory. That, that's a visible path. But yeah, here, this, it's, it's a gamble. It's a huge roll of the dice. I mean, if you just try to pressure forward and eat up that – that distance, you gotta trade something. You gotta trade. He's he gonna have to eat a few strikes to get close enough. And what is he? What kind of? What is he gonna hit? Get hit with? So I don't know. A few jabs and a few straights. Uh, you might be able to survive that. It's hard to survive getting kicked in the side of the head. 
and then keeping keep it moving. Well, I will say this. Max Holloway figured out Yair in that fight, and I'm pretty sure Alex could probably do the same. You think um, Yair improved his ground game because of that Max Holloway fight? I think he improved that f- his ground game also because his losses have been from being taken down the way he was. Like, Frank Yeager exposed him, like, tremendously. And you're getting scooped up by little Frankie? Come on, man. I mean, it's, hey, shit, he'll scoop me. <laughs> like, hey. But <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, you, you're that's your job. You're a professional fighter, and you got Frankie Yeager scooping you, making you look like a bum. And then you got Max Holloway over here who does not do that. You got MMA Max beating you. <laughs> yeah, when you're on the feet, it's a great fight. But he knows, like, okay, I could take you down. And Max Holloway, he went there to win the fight. He ain't tried to put him away. He was like, okay, this guy's good. I got to do something. He figured that out. And it worked. So I think that helped him. And then when he went against Ortega, he knew he had to have a, a ground game. Because, yeah, Ortega, that's, that's his shit. And he knew he was probably going to get taken down. He ended up winning. Even though they say it was because of injury, but Yair did something to defend, which caused the injury, I feel. And I believe that's exactly what happened once they looked Yair at everything. Rod- Yair Rodriguez is young. What is he, 26 years old? He's young, right? Is he, is, am, I, am, I, am I mistaken in this? He's young, right? He is He is young. I, I don't know his exact age, though. I'll try to find See, it real quick. Well, the reason the reason I brought that up is his skills are still improving. So he's thirty. Thirty? Okay. Oh, 30? Sh- yeah. wow. wow, I was way off. I thought he was like twenty six. He's um, in prime time now, baby. Yeah, man. So like, it's it's not surprising to me that he's getting, you know, he's improving. You see these? He's taking he taking this, he's taking this seriously. So, um, his skills are getting better overall. I, I don't know. I I just. I'm a, I'm a Vol- I like Volkanovski a lot. I do, and this is gonna sound like I'm. I've been, you know, I was talk. I did a lot of talk for Islam earlier. I did a lot of talk. I'm doing a lot of talking for Yair right now. But it sounds like I'm just beating them, beating on Volkanovski when I'm not. Yeah, it sounds like you hate Volkanovski. It sounds like it does sound like I, it, sound, it does sound that way when it's not true at all. I like Volkanovski. I think he's. I think I, I just I said earlier that I think he's one of the best martial mixed martial arts of our time like, with, with the skills given. I mean, if you just look at the criteria for being a mixed martial artist, he does everything really well. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't have any glaring deficiencies that aren't physical. You can't help you can't help how you're how you're born, but the the skills yeah. you can earn the skills that you can earn he he's earned them all. He has all the earned skills. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's his only goal in his game? Is it like his size, like? Physical state, like is that his only hole? Volk. Um, I don't even know if it's a hole because I don't see it's not. It's, it hasn't been up to this point. He hasn't lost, and up to this point, it's hasn't really been a huge disadvantage for him. So I don't even know if it's a hole. I just think that someone is like when you look at a, a guy who is also considered an all time great, like GSP. He's just not really. He's not physically um, diminished in any way. I mean, he has he, a lot of his skill set. A lot of his skills aren't um, lacking because of physicality. Like he's extremely, he's a very good athlete as well as being a good fighter. Where and then same as for for Mighty Mouse, you you look at him and he has all the tools. He's another, he's another guy who's on that list of one of the best martial artists ever. And if you go to the scale of like, if you go higher on that scale and you consider John Jones, he's physically gifted. He has the longest reach we've ever seen in the sport. You know, like he has physical yeah. gifts that make him uh, tough to deal with. In addition to being very, very well rounded in all the skill sets that encompasses mixed martial arts, but he has all the skills that you can earn. He's really good in stand up, awesome wrestler, good submission guy, good submission defense, good chin, ring generalship. Like he, he he's never. Um, caught in the awkward position in the cage, he has all those things that you ask, you look for when you look for a mixed martial artist. But he has a glaring—I mean, he has a uh, 
obvious physical advantage to with him having this really, really long reach. Volkanovski doesn't have that. He doesn't have anything going for him where, oh my God, he's this it's crazy knockout power, or he has this insanely um, blinding speed like a guy like Demetrius Johnson can boast. He's like, he looks super fast. He doesn't really have those physical things. He just has all the skills. Which is in the back. Um, I mean, I think he's, it's, it's even more of a, like, um, it, it gives him even more legitimacy for being one of the best um, mixed martial artists of our time because he doesn't have that overwhelming physical gift. So, I, uh, breaking news, actually. Um, Volkanovski, uh, with his interview with Ariel Hawani, he was debating with his family whether or not he should bring up the alleged ID use and he actually did. And so this was before what? Dan Hooker even tweeted out. The ID, ID. Thing. Okay. Yeah, so apparently there's more credence to it than just Dan Hooker being salty. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, so, so <laughs> something went down and, and, over in Australia that we don't know about and we're just finding out about. Yeah, and I, I personally am inclined to believe Volk because he's always been a very stand-up guy. And I don't think he would throw around that kind of accusation lightly. Like, I don't think he's the type to lose and, you know, be talking shit. So, if he's saying that, then there might be fire. Well, I mean, they did owe him one because, you know, that second Holloway fight. You know what I'm saying, John? John. You heard me? Yeah. Yeah, I heard you. <laughs> I mean, the refs did owe him one. You know what I mean? They gave him one with Holloway, so. I mean, they owed him one. Or he owed them one. One or the other. I don't know how you want to look at it. But, now nah, that Ivy thing, if that is true, this is going to. Ooh, we. Habib might come out of Shakes retirement. Everything. I still don't see that. Khabib would have to come back as a light heavyweight at this point. He's going to come back <laughs> and be like, Islam, brother. What is brother. he doing, brother? What is <laughs> he doing, brother? Well, what, what will bring Khabib out, I think, will be uh, Connor smoking Islam. That would be the only thing I could see. Okay. Bring okay. So we're we're, we're segmenting into the chit chat part now, are we? Is that what you're telling me? Are you telling me that? That's where we're going. The chit chat part. We can go chit chat. Well, yeah. if Habib came back to fight Connor, it'd probably be at like 185, give or take. If Habib. Yeah, Habib. If he came back to fight, I don't think he's coming back. If. Okay. He I don't, he never expressed any interest in fighting Connor again. If Connor fact, would have beat Islam, did. I think yeah. it would happen. In fact, I think he said everything that he, everything he said so far surrounding that is like, he has no interest in fighting Connor again. He said he would if he, Connor beat Islam. I think that's the thing. I think that's. I, I, didn't, I don't know if that came out of Habib's mouth. That's more fan speculation. No, it, it, it came out. <laughs> it came out of Ali's. It came out of his mouth. Who was that? It came out of Ali's. It, it Ali. was, okay, okay, okay. Who's Ali again? Their uh, manager? No, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's also. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure Habib said that because he's trying to get Islam a big name fight to get him to be a champion. But I do think if Connor did smoke him and became champion, that might perk him. That might, you know, his dad and that legacy, and to be stained by because it was his dad that kept Khabib from like really losing it on Connor because his dad was like, you know, you got to forgive him, you got to be a good guy. And he invited Connor to come live with them and train and everything. Like his dad was very honorable. So I, I don't know how that would affect Khabib. But it'd be, it's fun speculation. You also got to put into the, the point that uh, the whole reason why he's not fighting anymore is because of his mother anyway. So his mother would have to pass also. 
to get that to come to fruition. And then, but it'd be a fun fight, even if I guess. That, even if that does happen, let's say, for instance, all the cards line up to where we get this big rematch showdown with Connor and Habib again. Both guys will be out of the fight game for a while, Habib longer, and Connor looks like he's he's getting ready to come back. The what do you what do you see? You think uh, Habib could just jump right in and be back to the the level of um, he was when he left? Absolutely no, not. I don't. I don't. I, I, I didn't. I, Habib is not again. Habib is in that same boat as Volk. But he doesn't have any overwhelming physical attribute that makes you say, okay, well, even if he's out for a while, he got this. He can lean on this. Habib's bread and butter was the fact that he's a grinder. And he's all, he's constantly chain wrestling, putting you in these compromised positions on the ground, and then being able to you know go for the submission or go for the ground and pound after grinding you out. That kind of style, you have to be constantly in the gym. And constantly working on your, your grappling and the, the small little details of how you're going to get that specific opponent in those spots. If you're not doing that, you lose it. Like, you're not going to just pick it up five years later and just be back a mauler after taking that time off. That's a lot of bears to wrestle. It's a lot of bears. <laughs> well, now, I mean, he's not, in, is he still working out at AKA? <laughs> Did he completely remove no. himself from... Um, no, I don't think he's team. doing anything, man. Oh, yeah. No. Forget about it. Forget about it. I believe it. he went home to be a family man. I really do. He took the guy route? Yeah, he went home to be a family man. Mm-hmm. What guy said, hey, man, this ain't for you, cuz. But either way, if, if it does happen and Islam gets stripped of the title for the IV, ooh-wee. It's going to be... Ooh, that's going to be interesting because then you know... There's one guy for sure that I know wants Connor again badly and he hasn't tasted the strap yet. That's uh, the Louisiana animal. That's important. DP. Oh, that hot sauce uh, man. Want, the hot sauce man? Yes, sir. Woo. He, he, wants, um, he definitely would, would love to see Connor somehow snake his way back to the title. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, what did Dustin Poirier say about the Ultimate Fighter? The Ultimate Fighter All My Children edition? Yeah. Something like that? Yes. <laughs> yes. He did. I mean, oh, yo, he smoked I mean, them twice. So he does definitely got that, that call for that one. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, people were saying that uh, Chandler had the Dana White privilege. But Conor oh. McGregor trumps him on Dana White privilege. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay, okay. When we're going here with this, is he white? I thought white was only an American thing. He's Irish. Is because he's white skinned? Is what you're referring to? Dana White privilege. Because Dana's the white. Tony Ferguson phrase that he said about Michael Chandler. Oh, the Dana White privilege. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But <laughs> the real one with all the all the Dana White privilege juice is Connor, the Golden Boy. It is Connor. That's the cash cow. If Ronda Rousey yes. would come back today, you absolutely know what it'd be. I don't shot. No. Yes. No. Yes. No Ronda Rousey would walk straight into a title shot. There, there ain't no, no other class. fight. No, wait, class. She'll wait, fight class. like an easy fight into a title shot. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Not going to forty-five. Thirty-five. Yeah. No, honestly, if I Ronda mean, either fought, way, it's the same person. person. I think yeah. she would try to cut weight down to like one fifteen. That's her safest bet. I feel for a title shot. If she could. Man, I don't think Rhonda could go oh, down to 115. Like like maybe saying, 125. If she could. If she, cut, if she cut off, she would have to cut off both her butt cheeks. What, and, what and butt cheeks? She, she would have to cut off both her butt cheeks and remove both of her like breasts to make 115. She could transform. I don't see her making 115, man. That's That's... It's hard for him. That's a, that's a hard weight cut. You're asking a lot from the deck, bro. 
Well, even at 125, she still gets pieced up. Well, one time yeah, she gets demolished. You know how she will. You know how she will look at yeah. 125. She looks sick. She would look sick. Bro. Look like zombie mm-hmm. sick. Like she would probably have kidney failure sick. Like that's a lot. Wanda's not tiny, man. Nah, she's just back there. But no, Connor is the cash cow. No matter what he does, because he stayed in the news somewhat, some way, or re- irrelevant, or relevant by being on Twitter and whatnot and doing miscellaneous things. So he's still like relevant. People know who he is. He's still active with random things. So he's a cash cow. He does have the Dana White privilege. Connor moves the needle. Connor moves the needle. Humble. Humble. I don't think Connor and Humble go together. You talking about bald headed Connor for one fight? Bald headed Connor. Connor. Which Connor Connor are we getting? Huh? We're getting Connor is a humble whiskey merchant. That's that's what he is. (laughs) Punching old men for not taking a (laughs) shot. I've never heard Making this. Making women this. swim off his yacht. Oh, get off my yacht, bitch. One thing about Connor, though. Oh, yeah, he did get the little uh, the BJ2 on the yacht. That was awesome. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> one thing about Connor, uh, as far as like the UFC is concerned, is he, you know wh- whatever he does it, when it comes to selling the fight, he's going to move the pay-per-view point needle. And no matter who his opponent is, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Connor's fans are going to show up. They're going to buy that pay per view. They're going to buy that merch. So there's a lot of them. That's one thing. That's one reason why he has such a huge, uh, like like you were saying, little Dana White privilege. You know, when Connor's on the ticket, you about to move some numbers. So whatever you pay in marketing, you about to get that all back and and then some in profit. Well, Connor is the consummate professional, though. Like people don't really give him as much credit that like, he has always made weight he always does all the press and media and everything and he absolutely does everything he can to make that fight money you know and he puts on a show and he brings brings an entire country with him he does like, he does he does he changed the game he changed the game especially you know what one thing i see one thing connor definitely aces he does he does he does extremely well is the press conferences he gets the sound bites that you want, like even if it's accidental, even if Jeremy Stevens is just running his mouth in the background, he goes, "Who the fuck is that guy?" <laughs> you know what I mean? He gets these, he gets these sound bites that the media can just eat up and play on the loop. So he does a really good job of playing that game. I mean, because before that, it was Chell Sonnen. Chell did the best job of being on the mic and promoting fights, and you know, making you want to see whether you want to see him get beat up or whether you want to see him win. You wanted to see because he made you care. He his his words made you care. Connor does that same thing, um, but he's also able to put people away. He can say, "I'm going to knock you out in this round," and then knock you out and deliver, like he did with Jose Aldo. So it's 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 the he has a lot going for him when it comes to the things that happen outside of the cage. One thing that's been going not going for him so much is the inside of the cage. He's been recently, you know, it's been a little little rocky for him. So if that new titanium leg can hold up and he can, you know, get back into the USADA with all the extra Brazilian broccoli, get all that out of his system, you know, get that acai out of his system. Who knows? He might come back and be something special. But right now, the ultimate. I'm really looking forward to that ultimate fighter with him and Chandler. Chandler's good at talking a little bit of shit too, so this should be fun. Oh, Chandler <laughs> is in for a world of pain when it comes to because you know you brought up Chael Sonnen and uh, hold on, wait, 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 wait. John, yeah. John, John, John. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry to cut you off, bro. Because this is gonna be really good. What I'm about to say. Who has a better first round, Chandler or McGregor? You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? Tell me you don't get what I'm saying. Please, somebody tell me they don't get what I'm saying. They're both uh, round one wizards. Exactly. They all yes. have the <laughs> best first round ever. So who's going to get it? 
If I if I had to guess, I'd say Chandler, dude. He's way more active. Well, I say if I had to guess, I would say Chandler. Who need? Well, here's the question: Who needs the better first round? McGregor. I think McGregor McGregor needs the better first round. I think McGregor needs the first round because of he's going to get inside it. He did that with Jose Aldo. He's going to get what? Inside. Oh, inside. uh, Chandler's. Yeah, he's going to mess with him. Because he's going to have the entire season of the Ultimate Fighter to, to shoot, to get inside his head and to mess with him. He did that shit to Aldo over their, like, year-long press call. And remember, he didn't fight uh, Faber on his uh, Ultimate Fighter season. So this is going to be really interesting to see also on the show how they interact with each other. Did he fight Mayweather after... Yeah, he, he fought after Alvarez. I don't know if I don't uh, to answer to 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 um I'm gonna talk about the you said that he can get in his head. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if McGregor can get into Michael Chandler's head. I don't think he's that kind of guy. Much like um Nick Nate Diaz who talks a lot of shit, he can take it as well. Well, Mayweather talks a lot of shit, he can take it. You can't get in guys like you can't get in their heads. Mm-hmm. Not gonna, you're not going to be able to, at least. I mean, I think that McGregor could probably get into his head, but I don't think it matters. Because getting into somebody's head makes them aggressive and reckless in a fight. Which is what Chandler does anyway, so who fucking cares? That's fair. The kind of guys that I, I've noticed that you can you can kind of rattle them are the guys who are more respect and honor-oriented. Guys who feel like you disrespected them or you dishonored them by talking shit. The guys who are shit talkers also, they don't give a fuck. Like you, you can you can watch the lead up to Diaz McGregor. There's nothing that he can say that's gonna make um, Nate move move off of his game plan. Nothing he can say. Nothing he could say to Floyd that can make Floyd change what he's gonna do. Like he's just gonna do it anyway. Like you can't insult him into making him make a mistake. Whereas a guy like Aldo, it's more a more respect oriented guy. You can make him feel like, oh, I've been disrespected. Now I gotta fucking take your head off. Or a guy like Vanderlei Silva, you can say stuff to him to where he's gonna change how he's approaching this fight, or whether you even make it to the fight. He might try to fight you now. I can't <laughs> let you get close. I can't let you get close. I can't let you get close. <laughs> so you know, it's 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 just like certain guys that. that they respond negatively toward shit talk, and some guys don't give a fuck. And I, I don't think Michael Chandler gives a fuck. I don't think you can talk trash to him and get him to change what he's going to do in the fight. He's going to do it anyway. Like, like Mark said, I think he's going berser- to be a berserker anyway. He's going to go in. He's going to go in regardless. Now, given it might, mm-hmm. he might really try to hurt him, like for real. That's about yeah, it. Like if he gets some, if he gets some compromise, like like I'll say, um, if you look at Dustin Poirier for instance, like the first fight, you can tell that the trash talk definitely got to him. Definitely got to him in the first fight with McGregor, right? Oh yeah, sure. McGregor like he, Poirier yeah, yeah. won yet because he was young, dumb, and he had a shaved head. <laughs> he was fighting that featherweight. What are you trying to say? He was also, he was also <laughs> fighting that featherweight, looking like a fucking baser, but um. He matured. If you look at if, if you look at the the later fights, trash talk didn't mean shit to him. They're like he didn't. Mm-mm. He might have gotten a few extra shots in mm. when McGregor was yeah. compromised, but he it didn't bug him. Nah, that was humble no, Connor. It's a long quality. That was humble Con- uh, humble Connor. That was humble <laughs> Connor. That fight, bald head, no, no, humble no, 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 no. Connor with the glasses. He was what? so polite. He he gave no, him. No, he wasn't bald head. I think he had his. No, hair. that no humble Connor got. The same. No, he had a bald head in that no, fight. Right. He was humble. Humble Connor got knocked out. Exactly, and then the the, the, the third fight. Connor, your wife sent your wife sent me the DM. third fight when that fool was on the ground getting interviewed by Joe Rogan. Oh my god, <laughs> <Yeah>. that <laughs> Connor, <laughs> bad boy uh, Connor came back. Me. Yo, that that Connor was dead ass. Serious. Like, you've seen those memes where it's like, oh, this is Anderson Silva after he broke his leg on the ground crying. This is Chris Weidman breaking his leg on the ground crying. 
And then you see uh, Connors, and he just looks like an angry kid. But, yeah. <laughs> not Where the famous your wife's in my DMs comes back <laughs> again. I'm like, Jesus Christ, talking shit with your leg all flopped to the side. <laughs> well, again, that goes to, that speaks to Connor being a consummate professional and entertaining the crowd who, you know, keeping, until the lights go down, you know, on the show, keeping the audience in, enthralled, you know? He does a great I, I would say that Connor is a great uh, promoter. Not not a consummate pro- professional. <laughs> but he's, I mean, he's probably not, it's far I, away. I can't call him a professional. But as far away from a professional as you can get. He does make weight. Well, he, also, they, he, also, they, they, he also feeds dollies to buses. He punches old <laughs> men. <laughs> so yeah, wait, he's not a professional. I, they, they're professional cage fighters. They're, they don't, you know, they're, they're kind of so... When I say the consummate professional, I mean at, for a, a you know cage fighter trying to kill one another. I don't know if you if you want to look at professionals when it comes to the game of uh, cage fighting. I think you got to look at guys like GSP and Anderson Silva. Those were the guys who kept it professional. They didn't, GSP didn't do a whole lot of trash talk. He just showed up, <laughs> made weight, fought, did all the promotional um, obligations, and then went home. You ain't seen right. the controversy with him outside of the fight. Same with Anderson Silva. He just did, he did, all, he did all the promotional obligations. It, respectful. Yeah, but they didn't, they, you know, they, they didn't move so, the needle as much as Connor does, which is... Well, so, well I think Connor yeah. moved the needle not because of his professionalism, but because of his lack thereof. He had more drama, more controversy. <laughs> and, 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 That's what moved the needle for him, that, not because he was being this, like... Neat, clean professional. It was more like him throwing bu- dollies at buses and punching out old men at bars and sh- like and showing up late to press conferences, wearing a mink and shit. That was later Making on. The champions belt. Well, that was later on. Being drunk. He recognizes what he what the the game is, what profession he's in. He's an entertainer. He, that's what they're you know they're trying to get people to watch, and that's what he does. He watch me, watch what I do, report on everything I do. What I say, what you know, he makes the money. Correct. He took the Kim Kardashian road to like success and fame. He was like, I don't care what you, what integrity is taken away. I'm just gonna be all press is good press, all of it, no matter if it's negative or positive. So in that light, you're right. He did take advantage of a system that was like obviously uh, put forward. Like you can be famous. You don't have to, you can be infamous. Infamy and fame is the same thing when it comes to media attention. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think it, it's worked out well for him. No, absolutely, it's worked out. It, it's worked out really well. Like he's probably um, responsible for a huge chunk of the newer fan base. If you look at the fan base of mixed martial arts between the ages of um, thirty and from twenty two to thirty. Most of those are Connor fans, new guys who came in when around the time of Connor's reign, and he attracted those eyes to the sport. So, I think he's a huge influence on the the younger part of new MMA fans. Listen, Uriah Faber said it himself. He said Connor is a great thing for the sport, and he's absolutely right because it got more eyes to the sport. Mm-hmm. But at that time, it was like all of us. The, at that time, I'd say we were the not the old guard, but the guard. You know what I'm saying? Because now we're the old guard. Because we done seen all our favorite dudes basically retire. And then the young cats that we seen, they're like, okay, they're gonna be something now. They're almost on the way out. They're at that point where they're they're close. So he was right. Connor definitely changed the game with his approach with everything. To now where you got guys over here, they just talk trash for no reason. And they're not even good. That's the difference between Connor and some of these newer cats. He's actually good. He was he was starching fools at 145. Tell me he wasn't. 145, yeah. he was the man. Like I hate to say it, but bro, he was the man. Now, given who you fought well, you vote, I don't know. Well, hey, hey. <laughs> Wait, that fight with Eddie Alvarez is... 
a master class. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when Connor was peak Connor. That was peak Connor. Remember, this fool came in with a braided man button, smoking everybody. <laughs> like bro, like bro, he was he was legit, and I hated every second of it. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Like for real. Like his his Honor. little slogan. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? When when my Honor. wife knew who the fuck he was and I didn't know who he was, there was an issue. Kind of looked untouchable at one forty five. Like when he his fights against like Dennis Seaver and Marcus Brimage. Oh yeah, when he, he beat like, the scouter guy, the uh, guy with the mm-hmm. same scouter. Yeah, when he smoked Brimage. him. God, I didn't I didn't pay attention to him either. Then I seen he beat. No, Kyle Matt. just look. He looked untouchable at that weight class and. At that, at that time, he was talking shit and backing it up. Mm-hmm. That's the difference between, like you said, some of these younger guys. They're like uh, I, the one that instantly pops to my mind. Um, I can't remember the guy's name at the point, but he talked a lot of shit to Cowboy Peroni. I think it's Alex Fernandez. Her name, Alex, her name, oh. Alex Fernandez. Oh, yeah, Alex Fernandez when, uh, when yeah. Cowboy smoked him. Right, but he was he kind of like was – he jumped the gun a little bit where he was – Talking crazy amounts of shit on how he's gonna, you know, make Cowboy look like a thing of the past and all this other stuff. Now, had he done that, it might be a different story. If he comes in and he backs it up, all the shit he's talking, and then, you know, ends up moving on to being a superstar, then it'd be a different story. The same with Kevin Lee. I'm talking about how he's gonna do all these crazy things and, and be the first person to beat Habib and all this other stuff. I see holes in his game. If he's able to take that trash talk and translate it into victories and, and earn the accolades that come with the shit talk, like Connor did, then we'd be talking about a different a different situation for his career. But the reason why Connor is where he is is because he talked that shit and backed it up. That's what I think a lot of these um guys who are mimicking him are starting to see too. Like you have to you can't just be talk the talk. You gotta walk the walk as well. And what we have is a lot of guys. We have a ton of guys who can walk the walk, but don't do the talking. We have a lot of guys who are really good, but they don't talk shit. They just get it done. But then we got some guys who do a lot of talking that don't get it done. So you got you got in order to have that kind of like um, rise to stardom, you got to do both. And the only guys that have, have been able to do both have been is Israel Adesanya and. Um, I mean, I guess you can kind of say Kamaro has talked a little bit too, but he he, he wasn't really a, known for being a shit talker. But Izzy did it. Though he did the, with the flash, the entertainment, and the results. To get a title or just like wins? I mean, you could say Kobe did it too. Even though he Kobe, didn't Kobe get had, the dubs, he did he, get, he get the, the title shot. He didn't shots. get the key victories. He didn't get the key victories. He didn't get the title wins. But he fought for it twice like, though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He did thing. well Kobe in those fell, fights. Kobe fell a little bit short. Like, he was right there. Right there. If he, he wins any one of those fights with Usman, and now we're talking about a superstar. Oh, for sure. The one with the, you know what I mean? Like, the he, actor. he just fell a little bit short. Hell of an actor. I, I, I still think he is, uh, I mean, he, he's one of the, the new movies at that, that, that weight class. Like, his pay per views do well. Well, he is the need to move. Very well. He is definitely. Like, everything he has going for him, the whole Masvidal stuff, the whole Usman stuff, everything. Himself being the heel, all that shit is is great for him at 170. Now, if he fights Chimaev and beats him, oh my God. I was going to say that. The only problem I see for Kobe right now is the top five guys. He's. Lost to Usman twice. He hasn't matched up against Leon Edwards yet. He hasn't matched up against uh, Haz- Chimaev yet. Let me look at this. Who's not Chimaev? And then he still hasn't matched up against Gilbert Burns. So he has three guys that are world beaters at 170. Are the you know guys who are either champion contenders or championship hopefuls. And then the guys behind him. Guys like Jeff Neal, I think uh, Kobe would be a, have the edge in that one. He would have the he'd be the favorite going into the Jeff Neal fight. But I don't know how he would look against Shavkat. Woo! I mean, Shavkat, that boy good. Shavkat is the future. He will. That's, be... that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like his time might have passed him. 
he might have been like he might have missed that window. If you look at the guys that are coming up, the guys that are on the rise, like um, Hamza Chimaev, Shavkat, Rachmanov, those two guys are. I don't. I think they will be matchup nightmares for Kobe. And then the I, guys are right I disagree up. on on Chimaev. I think, wait, you don't I think don't Chimaev. Think you think Shamayev would be a matchup nightmare for Kobe? No, I, I think I, Kobe Kobe's cardio is gonna carry, and his wrestling maybe, skills. Well, well, maybe, maybe, but you you understand Shamayev's a bigger guy than um, he's a bigger one seventy. So his wrestling's good. I mean, he's not gonna you're not gonna just ragdoll him or press him up against the cage for rounds at a time, and he has knockout power. He has knockout power at middleweight and at um he can do damage at 170. So we've seen Kobe get stopped by Usman. And I think Chamayev and Usman Chamayev Usman match up with Kobe are gonna look pretty similar. It's gonna be a, a similar matchup for, for Kobe. He's gonna be fighting a guy who he can't just dominate in wrestling, and he's not gonna have a huge edge on in striking. In fact, the power edge is gonna go to the other guy. With with Ch- Kobe versus um, Shamayev, I think that's going to be a similar fight to Co- Kobe versus Usman fight. Isn't that a weird thing? How this uh, welterweight top five are still not fighting each other? Crazy, right? Still, wait, didn't, wait, wait. Burns has a fight, right? Burns is booked. Burns is fighting. Mm-hmm. That's why he fighting? just fought. Yeah, he's fighting. Damn, who is he fighting? I forgot who he's fighting, oh. but. It's not somebody. What? Masvidal. Masvidal. He's, that's what it is. He's not fighting right. somebody in the top five. That's what it was. And then you got uh, Bilal. He doesn't have a fight yet. He just he looked really Thank impressive you. in his last match, though. And Hamzat doesn't have yeah, a fight yet. Yeah, that was yet. really good. Kobe oh, doesn't wow, have a fight it. yet. And that's like the the four guys in the top five that. Well, three guys in the top five that's not fighting each other. Kamaru's fighting Leon, of course. That's the rematch. And then you got three or two, three, and four fighting nobody yet. But Gilbert Burns is fighting Masvidal, who's not ranked. Or is he? Oh, he's number 11. My bad. He's number 11. So th- what sense does that make? Then you got Jeff Neal fighting uh, Shavkat, though. That boy's good. Right. Shavkat's going to he gonna make a difference. He's probably going to fight. Jeff Neal, then he might get. I feel bad for who he fights next. He probably won't. Hold on. He probably won't fight Chamayev yet. I was say don't don't give him, versus Chimaev, bro. Hey, don't don't give him the, the victory over Jeff Neal just yet. Jeff Neal looks improved. Jeff Neal's, Jeff Neal's dangerous and he looks improved. So it's good. This he's is a good. big test. Yeah, this it's a, a great. He's test. a dog. This is a he's big a dog test for Shopkai. He's a dog. Well, I'm I'm yeah, doing a little beat, MMA uh, math. He just, he just finished uh, Vicente Luque. For real? No, I thought yeah, Vicente was Luque's bad, fight bro. was uh, was uh, against Bilal. Am I tripping? What's that? I thought... Uh, yeah, he fought... It, it, well, I, I get Jeff Neal and Neil Magny confused a lot. Damn. But, um, he finished? Well, Neil yeah. Magny was the last person that Shavkat fought. <clears throat> wow. Wait, no, Neil, Ma- oh, Neil Magny just fought as well. Damn. He just had a fight. Yeah. So he can't yeah, get Jeff- killed. Okay, right? okay. That's a good fight then. Yeah, Jeff Neal. Okay, okay. Jeff Neal's not a... Uh, yeah, yeah not- dude. Okay. Jeff Neal brought it to Vicente. My bad. My was- bad. My bad. My bad. Wait, wait. Jeff Neal's that- still like- I'm going <laughs> off Jeff was- Neal that lost to Wonder Boy. My bad. My bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think we get... We get we, we, when we look at a fighter and we kind of like... We give them, we see them perform in you know an event, and we kind of keep them there as if they can't get better. And I think a lot of people were doing that with um, Charles Oliveira when he on his rise. They were saying like, "Oh, well, he's still the same old Charles, nah, same old guy." Super you know, Saiyan um, Charles is different. Same the same way we did with, <laughs> like the same thing we're doing currently with Yair Rodriguez. We're thinking like, "Oh, like he's oh, that man. same guy." I'm like, I don't know, man. I, this this current version of Yair looks pretty damn good. All I got to say is about time for Yair to uh, do his thing because he's very talented. Mm-hmm. And he's entering that. I think it's 
I think it's Jair's like put up or shut up time. Yeah. He's got a tough. He's entering, he's entering that athletic prime age of like from thirty to thirty three, where he's yeah. gonna have you know experience and the uh, ability still. So we'll see. He's got Excited. a tough one though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He could be the I first guy to do it. Upcoming fight. Or? Well, upcoming fights we got coming up, Chris. Uh, we got. I didn't know I wanted this until now. Uh, Andrade versus Blanchfield. That's. I feel like that's going to be a really good uh, women's MMA fight. Yeah, Jessica Andrade basically just beats everybody except the champion. So. Have a hell of a she was in, and then Aaron uh, Blanchfield went against um, Meatball Molly, and just made her just embarrassed her. There's a difference in uh, competition when you go from Meatball Molly to Jessica Andrade. It's a very big difference. <laughs> it's a big. It's a well, you know, uh, you know, um, it's a big Meatball difference. Molly is on that fucking hype train, you know. So, I mean, that spinning back elbow only gets little, you so far. Am I right? True. Yes. But it's still a number 10 rank versus number 3. Okay. And Blackfield has some hands. That's great. Gap. Wait, wait, gap. Yeah. Wait, wait. Who's a... Uh... Yeah, it's a big gap. I'm pretty sure, like, Jessica probably fought everybody else that's like, in between there, right? Or something like that. What would... What would... Um, just fought... Flyweight? Everyone. Um, Lauren Murphy. Yeah. Murphy. Oh yeah, it's like it's, they're only doing that for matchups, man. Because I'm pretty sure Jessica Andrade fought Chukagian or Grasso. Grasso's fighting for a title, but just like the whole shit, yeah. like damn. How many fighters they got I in this division? Twenty two. Like, <laughs> <laughs> how many fighters they got in the women's division, man? They got more Say fighters 15. than that. I, nah, twenty two. Because you know they got to rotate in and out to be ranked. And they all jump weight classes all the time, too. <laughs> exactly. Oh, you talking about this fight card coming up this weekend? Man, this is... Uh... Yeah, yeah, that's this weekend. Uh... And then Krylov Span? I, that's, a, that's kind of a quick turnaround for Span, I think. He fought, what, in January? I mean, it's not no Sean Strickland quick turnaround, but... He took no damage. True. I'm talking about uh, Superman Span, right? He took no damage in the yeah, last fight. Yeah, Superman's fan. Who did he fight again? I just remember he's, he smoked him, whoever he fought. I remember that. I, I can't even remember who it was. Um, yeah, whoever he fought, he smoked. I remember that. Can we just talk about the fact that Jessica Andrade is ranked in the top 10 of three different divisions <laughs> currently? <laughs> Hold on, wait a minute. Are you telling me she's a straw weight, fly weight, and bantam weight right now? Correct. <laughs> no way. She's ranked number seven in bantamweight. Uh, where was she? Six in uh, strawweight. And flyweight, she's ranked three. Man, you might as well just give her a featherweight ranking, too, while we're at it. Just put her in a... Man, there ain't no one in featherweight women. Like I'm trying to Well, they don't even have a roster. <laughs> I'm trying to look up uh, Ryan Span and I can't get nothing yet. So This actual yeah, course, this next fight's good for gone. the uh it's good for the lightweight division or light heavyweight division with Ryan Span and uh, Krylov fighting. It's good to keep the division moving cuz we definitely need that right now cuz you don't have Yuri coming back no time soon. You got months upon months, and then from there he needs a training camp. And then uh, what's the other cat that uh, he tore his leg? Rakic, right? Rakic. No, yeah, Rakic. Rakic, he's another one. So that the, all we really have is uh, Anthony. Well, I think Anthony Smith and Anthony Johnny Smith? Walker just got a fight. Yeah, they just got yes. a fight announced. Oh, dude, each other. dude, I will bet a lot of money on Anthony Smith. Yes. I do not see him losing to Johnny Walker. Now, given Johnny Walker. What were you trying to find out about Span? Who was his last fight and when was it? 
Reyes in November. That's yeah. That boy took no damage. Reyes. He yeah. took no damage. He fucked up Reyes. Talk about going from yes. like a uh, oh, man title contender, dude. From being like, I I hate to say it is like the hype might have got to his head or something, man. Because he did so well against John Jones that you get what I'm saying. But then they get yeah, smoked the repeatedly thing, after like, that. No, nah. uh, Reyes, like he went from like almost beating John Jones to getting smoked, left and right. Like he's like the worst Buster Douglas you could ever imagine. Because he didn't win. That's the best way I could put it. Yeah, he he fell off hard after that John Jones fight. Everyone even said arguably that he he won that fight. Ooh, and then he just Tatiana wow. Suarez is coming back on uh, the twenty fifth. Who? Dub. She's she's gonna beat uh, Montana De La Rosa. Oh, uh, Tatiana Suarez. If she stays healthy, that is the female Habib. If she's much, Augusta Sakai has gotten. If she stays yet. healthy, if she stays healthy, that oh man, Valentina better okay. That's gonna be Valentina's test right there. She's gonna have. If actually, she can stay if, healthy, yeah. If she can stay healthy, Valentina's gonna actually have a contender. Well, given I didn't see the last fight with her, I heard that girl almost beat her. Who would she fight again? Um, Rodriguez, Talia right. Santos. Or my trip Was it Santos? I don't know. Isn't she fighting soon? Talia Santos? I, I thought I saw something about that. Oh, she was supposed to fight Jessica Andrade. Uh, oh, that's what it was. That's why I was excited. It wasn't against Aaron Blanchfield. It was Talia Santos versus Jessica Andrade. She was the chick that almost beat uh, Valentina, right? Yeah, that was her. Yeah. Yeah, because that fight was originally the main card was going to be um, San Hagen versus Cheeto. But they decided to put that card in front of a crowd. Uh, I forget where, somewhere in Texas. Yeah. And then they upgraded the bout to um, Talia Santos versus Jessica Andrade. And I was like, you know, I'm not mad about that. It seems pretty good. Yeah, and then Holly Holmes fighting Yana Santos on that Corey Sanhagen fight. Oh. All right, guys. So we've been going at it for almost two hours, so. This is a good one for us. We're back. Yes. Let me welcome the additions to the crew. We got Casual Chris and Johnny Dubs. You can't see yeah, Johnny yeah, Dubs. Thanks for having me. Pussy, you Make sure you like and subscribe. <laughs> Tell him again, John. Yeah. Tell him again, John. <laughs> Tell him again, John. One more time, John. Do it again. Share. Should like, subscribe, and share. This wonderful podcast. What, what's the name of it, John? Ashy Knuckles. Yeah, I, I gotta put my uh, ear to the uh, microphone. Make sure you're saying it. <laughs> it don't make no sense. <laughs> no sense. I was wondering what you were doing, but I was like, whatever he does. Hey, man. It's all for the clicks. You get what I'm saying? Ashy Knuckles. <laughs> I was taking out the trash. Well, on that note, Zip it up. (laughs) Zip it out. Zip it out. Peace. Later.